Genesis Volatility's educational series. Today we'll be talking about DeFi Options Protocol Lyra. In the recent past, with the invention of AMMs from Uniswap, we've seen huge growth in on-chain volumes. AMMs, or Automated Market Makers, allow anyone to pool spot assets and build markets directly on-chain in an instant. This type of infrastructure has rivaled traditional matching engines that we normally find on exchanges such as Gemini, Coinbase, or Kraken. The big problem with AMMs for options is that options have very fluid pricing mechanisms. Option values are derived by a combination of underlying spot prices, as well as time decay and implied volatility. So an AMM has to be smart enough to be able to deal with these changing characteristics over time. This is what Lyra attempts to do. It attempts to provide the innovative infrastructure of an AMM that also accounts for the changing dynamics of option prices. Option takers can interact with the Lyra AMM in order to buy or sell European cash settled options. Because Lyra options are European and cash settled, long option holders don't have to worry about exercising their option before expiration. On expiration, price oracles feed underlying spot prices to the AMM and the AMM computes intrinsic value of existing option open interest. Any intrinsic value is then locked and available for redemption from option buyers post expiration. This enables option buyers to buy an option and forget about it and later come back to it and claim any intrinsic proceeds. The Lyra AMM also allows option sellers to sell to open new positions on a partially collateralized basis. This means that people can go short options directly with the AMM. Part of the magic of AMMs is that as long as there's collateral in the pool available to trade, the AMM is always there ready to make a market and become a counterparty to an options trade. Lastly, the Lyra AMM provides markets for multiple expirations, as short as one week and as long as up to three months. LPs or liquidity providers deposit the required collateral that an AMM needs in order to have funds available for trading. When LPs deposit stablecoin into the Lyra AMM, they receive a pro rata share of the underlying assets. LPs are also able to freely enter and exit the Lyra AMM after a short seven day cooldown period, which means LPs are not locked into the pool for an indefinite amount of time. In the long run, LPs hope to make normal profits that resemble an options market making business. And the Lyra AMM tries to protect LPs from two major risks, Delta risk and Vega risk. Let's explore those now. Because LPs lock in stablecoin into an AMM, but the AMM writes and buys options on an underlying crypto, Delta risk or changes in the underlying represent a significant challenge. Luckily, each AMM in the Lyra protocol provides option markets for a single underlying crypto, which simplifies some of this risk. When LPs first deposit stablecoin into the Lyra AMM, the collateral is segregated into two sub accounts. One account is just a pure collateral account, and the other account is a Delta purchasing power account. As traders buy and sell options against the AMM, an internal delta risk is computed for each option outstanding. Buys versus sells, calls versus puts are all tabulated together across existing open interests, and the AMM comes up with a final delta calculation or a net delta calculation. This net delta risk is converted into dollar terms and then a rebalancing call is made to hedge this delta risk. Each rebalancing call can be done after certain thresholds have been met. If enough time has gone by since the last rebalance, 
and enough delta exposure outstanding exists, a new rebalancing call can be made and the AMM can hedge out its delta risk again. The reason for these thresholds is that rebalancing deltas has transaction costs associated with it. And without thresholds, the AMM could be depleted from overhedging delta risk. Lastly, some of you might recall that delta Greek calculations require implied volatility assumptions. This leads us to our next major risk, Vega risk. Ultimately, option prices are determined by supply and demand, and price changes can occur without movements in the underlying. These price changes affect something called the implied volatility of the options, and changes in implied volatility contain vega risk. Because option markets typically offer many different expirations and many different strike prices, something called the implied volatility surface has different components to it. Typically, at-the-money implied volatility behaves differently than out-of-the-money implied volatility. Lyra's AMM attempts to allow the market to organically find implied volatility equilibrium. In order to do this, the Lyra AMM breaks out volatility into two main components, baseline implied volatility or parallel shifts in the implied volatility level for different expirations, and skew ratio. Skew ratio affects the curvature of the wings of the implied volatility surface for a given expiration. Given that option trades against the Lyra AMM meet a certain size threshold, known as the standard size, the Lyra AMM will internally update the implied volatility pricing. Should an at-the-money option trade occur, the Lyra AMM will update the baseline IV, shifting up in parallel fashion for option buys or shifting down for option sells. If the trade occurs in the wings or strikes that are out of the money, a skew ratio component will also be added to the shift or the change in the implied volatility. Each time someone buys an option wing, the curvature will change as well as the overall level of implied volatility. Together, you can sort of think of the Lyra AMM pricing as a matrix or a volatility matrix with expirations along the top, strikes as rows, and an AMM that keeps repricing along the way as trades occur, shifting down for sells and shifting up for buys. All this taken together, this allows the AMM to provide efficient pricing and find equilibrium implied volatility. As trades occur in the Lyra AMM, LPs assume a lot of Vega risk. The Lyra AMM tabulates outstanding Vega risk by first normalizing to 30-day standard and then converting into dollar terms. As new trades come in, the P&L from Vega risk is measured to the outstanding pool collateral. Should the trade increase Vega risk, then there will be a fee associated to the market taker for opening that position. This will reward LPs for additional risk and incentivize market takers to minimize AMM risk for LPs. This is how Vega risk is accounted for in the Lyra AMM. Part of the value proposal of the Lyra AMM is the ability for market takers to open short option positions. And being able to open short option positions on a partially collateralized basis allows for implied volatility to be freely priced lower than it would be otherwise. Part of the problem with under collateralized options is liquidation risks. The Lyra AMM sets liquidation boundaries on the trade open by measuring shocks to the system. There's a vol shock component as well as an underlying spot change shock component to a short option position. Should under collateralization occur, the AMM or an external actor can call a liquidation function and the liquidatee will be charged a penalty fee, which will go to the liquidator as an incentive to keep tabs on under collateralized options 
and liquidate under, collater under collateralized users. Lastly, should liquidations fail to occur in a timely manner, an insurance fund or a security fund exists in order to make LPs whole. The incentive for staking in the insurance fund or providing collateral to the insurance fund is you will earn farming rewards for doing so. I hope you found this video helpful and remember, find edge, capture alpha, and slank size.